Congratulations. I rejoice with everyone on the start of a new year, year 2021. 2020 was a very harsh but remarkable year. We threw all our partners in growth. We triumph over the hurdles that litter all our parts. On behalf of the board, I say thank you to all our stakeholders that help us in attaining new heights. I particularly appreciate the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Ulushola Sonwolu, a passionate, committed, and transformational leader. Thank you for the giant leaps we made, especially through a COSL initiative. I equally thank our amiable and pleasant Deputy Governor, Dr. Obafemi Kadri Hamsad, for his immense support for all the activities of the board. I thank the Honorable Commissioner of Education, Mrs. Fola Shadi Adifisayo, for a remarkable leadership role in the sector. To the Executive Secretary, Dr. Hamid Buboi, and management staff of UBEC, ministries, departments, and agencies in the state that partner with us to ensure the smooth running of the basic education sector, I say thank you. To our corporate friends who stood by us and the people of Lagos State despite the harsh economic realities, I express a heartfelt gratitude. I'm particularly pleased with all our private sector partners in the recently launched Project Zero initiative. I cannot forget our wonderful teachers and parents who ensure that our children continue to learn even when our schools were shut. My sincere appreciation to the entire management and staff of Lasso Bed and the education family for their hard work and commitment all year round. Let us get back to work with a renewed energy. Together we can achieve more. I wish everyone a happy, healthy, and prosperous 2021. Igbega Hello, pupils. You're welcome to another wonderful edition of your favorite program, The Classroom in Your Home. A program organized by the Lagos State Government and packaged by the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board, La Subeb. The aim is to ensure that you are academically engaged in addition to what you're learning in school. I am Auntie Fumi, your English studies teacher. I am not here alone. I have with me your wonderful teachers. Hello children, I am Uncle Agbaje, your mathematics teacher, but you know me as the math magician. Uncle Popo is here, your general studies teacher. And we also have in the house our hard-working sign language interpreter, Uncle Wale. Together, we, we are bringing, bringing the, the classroom, classroom into your home. home. Please stay tuned. Pupils, you are welcome to Antifumi's class. In our English studies lesson today, our focus will be single words for phrases and sentences. We are going to be looking for single words to look uh, to use for phrases and sentences. It promises to be a very exciting class today. But before we go into today's lesson, correction to our previous homework. In our last lesson, we looked at the relationship among subject, purpose, and audience. So, for your homework, you were asked to identify the three elements in writing an article. What are the three elements required when you want to write an article? Did you do that homework? I received so many, and I want to say I am proud of you, children. The answer to that question is subject. Purpose and audience. Let's say together. Subject, purpose, and audience. Good job, you. Let me celebrate you with this chair. Well done. Now, to the learning objective for today's lesson. Don't forget I said today we'll be using single words for phrases or in, in place of phrases and sentences. So, by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to say the meaning of some single words used in place of phrases and sentences. 
and you should also be able to gain new vocabulary. Are you eager to gain new vo vocabulary? Are you sure? Then let's begin. It is always best to use fewer words in speech or writing. Instead of you using so many words, it is always the best for you to use fewer words in speech or writing. This is done by using a single word in place of a phrase or a sentence. You know what a phrase is and you know what a sentence is. So, instead of using phrases or sentences, you should be able to look for single words that will capture the phrases to be used or the sentences to be used. Are you ready? Let's see how it goes. Here is an example. Ajayi works in a place where ships are built or repaired. Ajayi works in a place where ships are built or repaired. Look, ah, what is that one word that you can give to the place where ships are built or repaired? There should be a single word to capture that. Yes, that's what we're going to do today. So, instead of saying, Ajayi works in a place where ships are built or repaired. Why not say Ajayi works in a dock? D O C K. Dock. Doesn't that sound better? Yes, and even more captivating. So, the single word used instead of a place where ships are built or repaired is what? Brilliant children. The one word is dock a dock yes d o c k are you excited yeah we're going to be doing more of this today the phrase where place where ships are built or repaired is replaced by one single word d o c k dock a place where ships are built or repaired is replaced by that single word dock now, let's look at more examples. I know you are eager to have more examples because you want to gain more vocabulary. A person who steals books. You've been looking for some of your books in the classroom. You put the, your books inside your bag or under your tables, under your lockers, and you wouldn't find them again. Somebody has been stealing your books. That person is referred to as a bibliocleft. Yes, a biblioclept. Who is a biblioclept? That person who steals books. He doesn't steal candies. He doesn't uh, steal cakes. He steals, or he or she steals books. That person is referred to as a biblioclept. Please note it. A lover of animals. Somebody who loves animals is known as a zoophilist. Let's pronounce it together. Zoophilist. Zoophilist. Just break it down into syllables and you have so, uh, um, the word zoophilist. And you have the word zoophilist. Another one is one who looks on the bad or the dark side of things. You don't see anything encouraging in in things or in issues around you that person is known as a pessimist the person is known as what a pessimist a pessimist is one who looks on the bad or the dark side of things you will always see the disadvantage no advantage the person is a pessimist let's move on one who looks on the bright side that is mr advantage mr merit that is Look, it looks at the bright side of things. That is the opposite of a pessimist. And the person is known as an optimist. The, the opposite of optimist is pessimist. The pessimist sees the bad side while the optimist sees the bright side or the good side. Are we together? Good. Are you learning at all? Okay. The next one is one who is new to anything or ignorant of anything 
is known as a novice or a neophyte. A novice or a neophyte is one who is new to anything or who is ignorant of things. It's known as a novice or a neophyte. What of the person who is under the protection of another? One who is under the protection of another is called a protege. Yes, a protege. P R O T E G E. Well, yeah, of course, it's a French word. That's why it has accents on it. So the person is known as a protege. Are we together? Are you gaining new vocabularies? Okay, good job, you. The act or the practice of spying. You know who a spy is? Okay. The act or the practice of spying is known as espionage. Yes, espionage. The act or practice of spying. When you look out for some information without that person's consent, the, then it is the act, you are, you are committing the act of espionage. Yes. When we talk about one who dies for a noble cause, the person is called a martyr. Yes. Somebody who dies for a noble cause is called a martyr. M-A-R-T-Y-R. Martyr. All agreed with one mind. All of you in your class, all of you, maybe about the 30 or 40 of you, you agreed on, with one mind, you agreed on a particular course. Then we say you are unanimous. Yes, unanimous. Agreed with one mind. That means without, an, the, without the exception of any of you, all of you agreed for to... to to carry out something or to do something, we'll say, okay, the decision is, or it was unanimous. One who loves and serves mankind, one who loves and serves mankind is known as a philanthropist. The person is known as a philanthropist. The person loves mankind, serves mankind, gives out his possession, helps the needy. The person is known as a philanthropist. Are we together? Are you enjoying the class at all? Okay. One who hates mankind, the opposite of, philanthro of, of philanthropist, is a misanthropist. A misanthropist. If you hate mankind, you are a misanthropist. But I know you all would rather be philanthropist. Is that not so? Well done. That's good of you. Word for word. If you don't want to use word for word, you want one word that means the same thing as word for word. You have the word is verbatim. Yes, verbatim. Instead of saying word for word, you say verbatim. A conversation between two persons. Oh, you already know this. Good. A conversation between two persons. That's a dialogue. Yes, conversation between you and I, between Uncle Popo and Uncle Agbaje, between Auntie Fumi and Uncle Popo. Conversation between two persons is known as a dialogue. Now it's activity time. Today we have been looking, we have been able to identify words, single words that can be used to replace phrases or sentences. So it's activity time. Your activity today will be to that you should replace each phrase or sentence in the following with a single word. Replace each phrase or sentence in the following with a single word. Number one, we are going to do it now. I'm not going to give you a special time to do it. So we are doing it together. Just write the alphabet. Maybe the answer is A or B or C. Number one, a conversation between two persons. A conversation between two persons. Is it verbose, dialogue, or predecessor? What is the answer? Number two, a place where military weapons are made or stored is known as dash. Is it asna, verbatim, or catalog? Is it asna, verbatim, or catalog? What's your answer? Number three, one who has been before another in office. 
one who has been before another in office is the person a godfather b philanthropist or c predecessor what's your answer number four all agreed with one mind what do we call that is it agreement a b obsolete or c unanimous what is the answer lastly a person who steals books a person who steals books is the person known as a geography b bibliocleft or c misanthropist what is the answer oh by now you sh you should have been able to give me five answers either in letters or in words so let's do the correction together now this is the correction to the homework you can see your answers oh a conversation between two persons is a dialogue did you write that please mark it you're correct a place where military weapons are made or stored is called an asna yeah that is the answer number three one who has been before another in office is definitely a predecessor yes another tick if you wrote that all agreed with one mind what is one word for that all agreed with one mind that is unanimous and lastly a person who steals books your workbook your textbook your exercise books a person who steals books is known as oh i can hear that a bibliocleft yes so did you get five out of five wow you're brilliant oh you got four you three there's no problem you are all smart children and i celebrate you with a cheer good job you now for your homework your assignment find the meaning of the following septuagenarian misogamist catalog octogenarian and accomplice i want the meaning of those words please do it submit promptly and don't forget to indicate your name your school your class and your local government education authority definitely if you do this in time you will get a gift yes i can assure you you will definitely get a gift and it's going to be a very unique gift so and that's it for today i had fun learning with you today and it's time for me to hand you over to the math magician on kwagwaje for another wonderfully packaged mathematics lesson but don't forget i will always tell you that auntie fumi is proud of you bye hello children you are welcome to this segment of the program the classroom in your home it is mathematics time and that means it is time to have some fun I am Uncle Agbaje. Today, we will still continue our work on volumes. Remember that the volume of a solid shape is the amount of small, small, one unit cubes you can arrange into that shape. We began our work on volume by studying how to find the volume of a cuboid and a cube. And we saw that we could easily get that by multiplying the length by the breadth by the height. Then, we moved on to finding the volume of a cylinder. And we discovered that by knowing the base area of the cylinder, we can know the number of cubes at the base. So we multiply the base area by the height, then we get the volume of the cylinder, and that is pi r squared times height. In our last lesson, we experimented on the cone and the cylinder, and we discovered that one third of the volume of a cylinder is the cone. So we used the formula for finding the volume of a cylinder, but finding the one-third of it, we use that formula to find the cone. And so we discover that the volume of a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder, and that is one-third pi r squared h. And then you were given an assignment, which we are going to be looking at the correction very soon, before we move on to today's work. But then, today is Monday. 
And as is our usual practice on Mondays, we always begin with a mental exercise, which we call the math aton. Are you ready with your pen and paper? Let's see how many you can get right today, my friend. You have all these sums and you have one minute. Begin. All right then, were you able to complete the task? Let's see what the answers are. 85 plus 62 is 147. 53 plus 86 is 139. And like that, we have 137, 110, 112, 85, 91, 80, 180 for 3 times 60. In this case, you just multiply 3 by 6. And remember the shortcut, we just add 0. 3 times 60 is 180, 40 times 12 is 480, 7 times 50 is 350, and finally 10 times 70 is 700. 1 times 7 is 7, then you had the two zeros. Were you able to get all, my friend? Almost there. Well, you're getting closer, and you are indeed smart. Now, let's look at the objective, or before that, the correction to that previous homework. As I said earlier, you were asked to find the volume of this cone. And usually all cones are one-third of the cylinder that has the same base and the same height. Okay, so using that, we'll find that the volume of this cone is one-third pi r squared h. But we are given the diameter in this case. To find the volume of a cone, we need the radius, not the diameter. And so if we know that the diameter is 7 centimeters, then the radius will be 7 over 2 centimeters. Now, volume of cone is one-third times pi r squared times h, which is the volume of the cylinder. So, substituting these values, 1 third is 1 third, pi is 22 over 7, the radius is 7 over 2, another radius is 7 over 2, and the height, as we have been given, is 20 centimeters. And so, when you get to this point, my friend, you are almost there. What needs to be tested now is your ability to reduce fractions and to, uh, you know, tidy up your work. So, let's see where we go from here. Let me select a pen here. Now, what are the common factors that we can see? Well, 7 goes here, 1, 7 goes here, 1. Okay, 2 goes here, 1, 2 goes here, 11. And then 2 goes here, 1, 2 goes here, 10. Now, we multiply 11 by 7, which is 77. Then 77 times 10. Just add the zero. That is 770 in the numerator. In the denominator, we have 3 times 1, and that is 3. So we should be getting 770 over 3 centimeter cube. And when we reduce this further, we'll get 256 2 third centimeter cubes. And I believe that that is what you got. You got it. Excellent job, you, my friend. I know you're smart. And of course, I will celebrate you with a chair. <laughs> now, moving on to today's work. What are the learning objectives? We'll be talking about the volume of spheres today. Spheres are shapes that are like your ball or, you know, your ball or your egg. Or egg is an ellipse. Let's just say a ball. All right. So we'll be looking at how to find the volume of a sphere and how many cubes we can arrange in there. So at the end of the day, you should be able to appreciate the relationship between cylinders, cones, and spheres. How are they all related together? And then you should be able to State the formula for calculating the volume of a sphere. You see all these formulas, it's, it's not easy to have them at the back of the head, but you shouldn't uh, d descend into cramming. Just understand the basic idea behind each of it, and you will have 
no problem and that is why uncle agbaje takes his time to explain how each formula is gotten how it come about it so that even if you forget the formula when you remember the process you will never lose your way my friend so we'll be looking at the formula for calculating the volume of a sphere and finally you should be able to calculate the volume of spheres when you know the radius of the sphere and that is the only thing you need when you want to find the volume of a sphere and so let us begin with the volume of spheres and so to find the volume of a sphere we're going to be doing it in much the same way as we did for the volume of a cone except today i will not be doing the demonstration i want you to watch a short video and uncle Gwaje will be right back this video will demonstrate the ratio of volume of a cylinder and a volume of a sphere we have a cylinder and a sphere with the same height and diameter fill the cylinder with water and push the ball into the cylinder. The volume of the water left in the cylinder is a third of the original volume. That means the volume of the sphere is two-thirds of the volume of the cylinder. In a previous video, we saw that it took two cones to fill a sphere with the same radius. Alrighty then, were you able to pick one or two things from that video? Well, let's just summarize what the video is trying to tell us. In the last lesson, we were able to show that one cone will only get to one third of the cylinder. Now, in that video, we saw that Two cones, the remaining two cones that are supposed to fill up this cylinder were poured into a sphere. And then that sphere was used to fill up the cylinder. And that means that the sphere itself will occupy two parts out of three parts. And that is two-third. The sphere will occupy two parts out of three parts of a cylinder. That is two-thirds of a cylinder. So what did we learn again? We learned that it takes a cone and a sphere to fill up a cylinder and that is because two cones will equal one sphere okay so the volume of a sphere is two thirds the volume of a cylinder but the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height that means that the volume of the cone of the sphere rather is two thirds of that that is two thirds pi r squared times the height and so we need to observe one thing though we can use this formula two third of the pi r squared times h but we need to observe that the height of a cylinder is the same throughout anyway it's actually twice the radius because the line from the center to the top is the radius and another line from the center to the bottom is the radius and so the height of the cylinder, uh, the height of the sphere, is two times of the radius. So instead of writing the height, I can just write two times the radius like this. The volume is two third of pi r squared times h. Then we can write our h to be the same as two radius. So we can multiply two by two, two times two, and we'll get four. This is four over three. Now we are left with pi r squared, and we are left with one r. And that means R will be multiplying itself R times R times R. That is R in two places. And so we can have pi R in two places multiplied by another R. That is R multiplying itself in three places. And that we are, that's why we have R raised to the power of three. And so we can use this formula. Knowing only the radius, we can find 
the volume of any sphere. So I'll take that again. The volume of the sphere is two thirds of the volume of a cylinder. And now we know that the height of the sphere is two times of the radius, obviously, because from the center to the top is the radius, center to bottom is radius, and that's the height. So multiplying height, two radius instead of the height, we can now multiply two by two and we we'll get four. Then r squared times another r gives us r in three places, three r cubed. And then we can use this formula for finding the volume of a sphere. So now we're ready for some problem solving. Let's find the volume of this sphere. Remember, we only need the radius, and we have the radius in this case. The radius is 3 centimeters. So what is the formula again? The volume of the sphere is calculated by 4 over 3 times pi r in three places. That's pi r cubed. And so let's substitute. 4 over 3 comes down. Pi is 22 over 7. It comes down. Then we have r, the radius, multiplying itself in three places. That is 3 times 3 times 3. We can just put 1 below to all the denominator place. And so we can easily break this down because when we get to this point, we are almost at the end. Okay, so three goes here one, then three goes here one, and then there are no common factors again. So what we just do is that we multiply three times three, which is nine. Nine times four is 36. 36 times 22 divided by seven. 36 times 22 will give us 792, and that is because, let me quickly work it here, 36 times 22, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 4 is 36, times 22, 3, 6, 2, 2, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 2 is 12, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6, adding along the diagonals we have 2 here, 6 plus 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 6 is 9. And then 1 plus 6 is 7. That's why we got 792. Then dividing that by 7. 7 goes here 1. 7 goes here 1. So we have 1. 7 goes here 1 again, remaining 2. 7 goes in 22, 3 times, remaining 1, which we have to divide by 7. So the final answer should be 113. 113 one seventh centimeter. Let me just clean that so that you can see. 113 one seventh centimeter cube. That is the volume of this sphere. And now you are ready for one of your own. Remember, you'll be given the radius. All you have to do is to apply the formula 4 over 3 pi r cube. That is radius in three places. Take this. You have to find the volume of this sphere. I'll give you one minute, 20 seconds. Begin. Alrighty then, I believe that you are done. Let's run through it together. Again, the volume of the sphere is calculated using 4 over 3 pi r cube. Now we know the radius is 6 centimeters. And that is 4 over 3 times pi, which is 22 over 7. Then 6 multiplying itself in 3 places. That's 6 times 6 times 6. So reducing this to the lowest term, we can have... Take a wipe in here. 3 goes here 1 and 3 goes here... Two, and I find nothing else that can go so we have to multiply 4 by 22 by 2 by 6 by 6 6 times 6 is 36 times 2 is 72 then 4 times 22 is 88 that is 88 times 72 I believe uh, let's multiply 88 by 72 just to be sure we got that right 
88 by 72. Put a line between each number and put a diagonal in each box. 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times 2 is 16. Adding along diagonals, we have 6 here. 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 plus 6 is 13. Regroup 1 to the next column, diagonal. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 1, 13. Regroup 1, you have 6. And that is 6336, three, six, which I believe should be the final answer. And so we get 6336. Then we have to divide that by 7. 7 goes here, 1, 7 goes in 63, 9 times, 7 does not go in 3, so we write 0, 7 goes in 36, 5 times, and we have 1 that we still have to divide by 7. So our final answer should be 905, 1, 7 centimeter cubes, let's check, 905, 1, 7 centimeter cubes. Did you get something like this or something very close to this? Well, I'm sure that with the assignment which is coming up, you will be able to perform better. So the summary of all that we have been saying is that the sphere is two-thirds of a cylinder. So the volume of a sphere will be two-thirds the volume of a, of a cylinder. And we're able to derive the formula for the volume of a sphere, which is 4 over 3 times pi r cube. So that's the formula. You might want to make a note of that. And so. Apply this formula in the homework that is going to be given to you. You have to find the volume of this sphere. Remember, what you have is the diameter. Capture this in 20 seconds and I'll be right back. Alrighty then, we have come to the end of today's lesson in mathematics. I trust that you learned many new things. Now I will hand you over to Uncle Popo for the general studies lesson. Till I come your way in the next class, remain wonderful mathematicians. Bye bye now. Hello Poopies, you are welcome to general studies class. I am Uncle Popo. Uncle Popo is here. Good. We are here together. Excellent. 100% attention is what I want you to give me in today's lesson. Our subject for today is basic science and technology. In our last lesson, we talked about sources of heat, and um, you were also told the uh, differences between heat and temperature. So today we are moving on into new topic. Before that, I have a few questions to test you. And I want you to answer immediately. The first question, what is temperature? Answer it now. Good. Some could attend, some could not attend it. Next question, tell me three different types of thermometer. Excellent. Some did not know what to say. All these questions that I've just asked, thermometer, um, temperature, types of thermometer, and uses of thermometer, all these we shall discuss in today's lesson. The learning objectives, one, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to list different types of thermometer, two, mention the units and symbols of temperature scale, and uh, state the uses of thermometer that's the third objective temperature in our last lesson we talked about we define temperature just to um, define it again you were told that temperature is the degree of hotness and coldness of an object or medium that's the meaning of temperature and uh, you were also told that temperature is measured using what we call um, thermometer for us to determine how cold or hot a place on an object is, we use thermometer. I think you still recollect all this. Now let's move on. Now we want to talk about types of thermometer. Types of thermometer. You know, when I started, I asked you to give me 
um, to mention three types of thermometer. So just pay attention to this. Types of thermometer. The first one is clinical thermometer. Say that. Clinical thermometer. And next I have mercury in glass thermometer. Say that. Excellent. Next one I have alcohol thermometer. Say that. And uh, I also have wet and dry bulb thermometer. Say that wet and dry bulb thermometer. All these are different types of thermometer that we want to talk about today. The four of them. This is clinical thermometer. This is how I think most of you have seen this type of thermometer before, especially when you um, visit hospitals for, I think some of you have seen this before. This is clinical thermometer. It's very common at hospitals. It is used in hospitals to measure the temperature of human body. That's why it's called clinical thermometer. It's used in hospitals to measure the temperature of human body. Human body temperature ranges between 35 degrees Celsius to 43 degrees Celsius. But above all, the average is usually 37 degrees Celsius. That's the average temperature that is expected, 37 degree Celsius. Now next one is um, mercury in glass thermometer. This is a other type of thermometer, mercury in glass thermometer. Now let's look at the diagram and see how um, mercury in glass thermometer looks like. This is mercury in glass thermometer. I know some have not seen this type of thermometer before. Okay, some have seen it. So let's see what we use this for. It's commonly used in school or chemical laboratories. Mercury in glass thermometer is commonly used in schools or chemical laboratories. I know so those of you that have um, um, science laboratories in your school will have seen mercury in glass thermometer before. And in most schools, they also have it, and have, um, you have seen the picture, that is mercury in glass thermometer used in school or chemical laboratories. It is also used in weather station to record maximum daily temperature. And next is alcohol thermometer, say that. Alcohol thermometer, I think, let's look at this. How many of you have seen it before? Great and some have not even seen it before. Some are just looking at it as if it's just, um, just like the ruler they have using to rule something. This is quite different. It's not the same with the ruler you are using to rule. This is alcohol thermometer. So what do we use it for? It is used mainly to record minimum daily temperature in weather station. Just like that mercury in glass um, thermometer, that we use in recording daily temperature in weather station. That's for maximum, but this is used mainly to record minimum daily temperature in weather station. So that is alcohol thermometer. Next is wet and dry bulb thermometer. Say that, wet and dry bulb thermometer. That's the fourth one we are talking about. I think from the diagram you can even see Dry is written here, wet is written here. This is just to tell you, once you see it, you know that this is wet and dry because the names are already, are already written there. Wet and dry bulb thermometer. So let's look at what we use wet and dry bulb thermometer for. It is used to measure the amount of water vapor in the sky. That's when we say it's used to measure the uh, immunity. That's the amount of water vapor in the sky. It has two thermometers, that's the dry bulb and the wet bulb thermometers. They are together called hygrometer. They are together called what? Hygrometer. It has the dry bulb, it also has the wet bulb like you saw in that diagram, but they are together called hygrometer. And um, it's used to measure humidity, that's the amount of moisture in the air. 
Now, talking about these different types of thermometer, you know, we have talked about the four of them, the clinical thermometer, mercury in glass thermometer, alcohol thermometer, dry and wet bulb thermometer. Let's look at the unit and symbols of temperature scale. Unit and symbol of temperature scale. The commonly used temperature scales are the degrees Celsius or centigrade, Fahrenheit and Kelvin scale. I'll take that again. We have all the um, scales that they, we are using, but the commonly used temperature scales is what we want to talk about. And they are the, the degrees Celsius, say that, degrees Celsius or centigrade. Also, we have Fahrenheit, say that, and Kelvin scale, say that. So these are the, the, the commonly used temperature scales that we want to talk about, Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin scale. Degree Celsius or centigrade, and uh, look at the symbol. When you see it like this, let's look at the body here. Eh? This is talking about Celsius, degree Celsius. Have you seen that? That's a symbol. When you see it, it's talking, talking about degree Celsius. The scale has ice point of water at zero degree Celsius, and the steam point as 100 degrees Celsius. In most questions, they will ask the freezing point of water. So you should know that we are talking about the ice point, that zero degrees Celsius. And in some questions, you can have it like, what is the boiling point of water? That's 100 degrees Celsius. We are talking about the steam point of water. So degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius. Next one is degree Fahrenheit. Let's look at the symbol. Can you see it? This is degree Fahrenheit. This is, so it has the highest point of water it has the ice point of water at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and the steam point as 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Next one is Kelvin or absolute scale. Say that. Kelvin or absolute scale. This is the symbol with capital letter K. That's the Kelvin. It's talking about the, the, that's the symbol for Kelvin or absolute scale. Now, the ice point of water is 273 degree Kelvin and the steam point is 373 degree Kelvin. That's the, the, the unit for measuring or uh, for measuring Kelvin or absolute scale. The ice point of water again 207 degree Kelvin and the steam point is 373 degree Kelvin. Don't forget and now on to uses of thermometer. What are the uses of all these types of thermometer that we have talked about? The first one, it is used to measure the temperature of human body. Your clinical thermometer, I think you know that. It is used to measure the temperature of human body. So don't forget, it's used to measure the temperature of human body. Next one, it is used to take daily minimum and the maximum temperature. You know, mercury in glass, uh, you were told, and um, the other one it is used to take minimum, daily minimum and maximum temperature. That's another uh, use of um, thermometer. It's used to take daily minimum and maximum temperature. Next one, it is used to control the temperature of reaction in the laboratories. It's used to control the temperature of reaction in the laboratories. You are told that these thermometers are very useful in laboratories. Next is, it is used to control the, te the, the room temperature when rearing chicks in the brooder's house. It's used to control the room temperature when rearing chicks in the brooder's house. Where, like in some poultry, they make use of this um, temperature. That's one of the uses too. So all these are the uses of thermometer and next one is it is used to take the immunity of atmosphere for weather forecasting that's the it's used to take the humidity of the atmosphere for weather forecasting that's why you see the meteorologists um, before they can tell us what will happen tomorrow whether it, uh, it will be rainy somewhere whether it will be sunny somewhere they have made use of thermometer to get to know the humidity of the atmosphere and they will come out with um, reliable results before the people. So um, it is used to take the humidity of the atmosphere for weather forecasting. 
So it's time for evaluation. I have just two questions. Question number one, list any three types of thermometer. Question number two, mention two uses of thermometer. You have just 30 seconds to attempt this. Eyes on me. Uncle Popo is here. I believe you are still there. So let's mark together. Question number one, list any three types of thermometer. We have mercury in glass thermometer, clinical thermometer, and alcohol thermometer. We also have wet and dry bulb thermometer, but just any three. Measure two uses of thermometer. One is used to measure temperature of human body. I know most of you will write this one and it's used to take daily minimum and maximum temperature and all it is used to control the temperature of reaction in the laboratories just two any of the two you are very correct we have come to the end of today's lesson until next time next lesson uncle popo says keep on studying bye My wonderful pupils, we have come to the end of another exciting episode on the classroom in your home. Another exciting episode indeed it has been for us. We hope that you have enjoyed yourself and you found it exciting as well. We learned a lot in the process of teaching you today and we hope that you did too. Now do you want to know how you can be perfect at what you do? The best way to be perfect is to practice. Practice, practice, practice my friend and nobody will be better than you. To this end, we have structured some online tests for you to practice at your own leisure time. You can access this test using the link bit.ly forward slash last web tests. The link again is bit.ly forward slash last web tests. Remember, these tests are our way of knowing how well you are performing because we want to help you to improve on your performance. Taking the online test is based on if you have access to either your daddies, your mommies, your uncles or your aunties' Android or smartphones. If not, you don't have a problem. Just send your comments, your questions and your homework to 081-50-865663. Please do not call that number. SMS and WhatsApp messages only. And when you're sending your assignment, Make sure you indicate your name, your school, your class, and your local government education authority. This is the only way through which we can identify you and I'll appraise you accordingly. accordingly. Good. All the topics taught in today's lessons are on Lagos Suburb YouTube channel for you to watch. Yeah. You can subscribe to Lagos Suburb YouTube channel to get notification when new videos are uploaded. The classroom in your home could be watched live on Facebook, the same time airing on television through the, through the page showing on the screen. Until our next lesson, when we shall meet again for another beautifully packaged edition, make sure you do your homework and submit immediately. Wash your hands regularly. Keep working hard. But above all, stay, stay safe. safe. Because at La Suburb, we, we leave, leave no child, child behind. behind. Bye.